Hello there, and welcome to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio, and we're coming to you from the Baptist Health South Florida studios. From the most common skin condition to a condition with causes unknown. We're talking about it all today. And with me is Dr. Deborah Longwell from the Miami Dermatology, and she's from Baptist Health South Florida. Welcome, doctor. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I feel like we're going to have a lot to talk about. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Tell me more what you do as a dermatologist. Well, I, I've been practicing over 25 years, and I take care of medical and cosmetic conditions of all types of skin issues, mm -hmm. um, whether it's an acne condition or skin cancer or cosmetic for wrinkles and damaged skin from the sun. So basically, you're kind of a little bit of a magician, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of that. So mm. let's talk about the most common skin condition and acne, because so many people get acne in their life. I'm being one of them as well. So why is it so common? Um, acne seems to be very common because of the condition with your hormones right. and your environmental influences. I'd say in my experience that if you don't have acne as a teenager, you're going to probably get acne as an adult. Oh, so um, you can get still adult acne. You can maybe not have it as in your youth, but you can. It, it, yes, it, okay. it, it seems that way. Um, whether it's in a hormonal acne that you're getting around the jawline, or cystic acne within the cheeks, or comedonal acne, mm -hmm. um, about 80% of of people, 11 to 30, have acne, um, and then as you're 30, they get an acne type of like a rosacea, possibly. Right. Um, which is an environmental or hormonal situation, or just an actual hormone acne when it happens just because you're going through menopause or andropause. Now, we're going to talk more about rosacea, but first, let's talk about the different kinds of blemishes that you can get from acne. And personally, I had cystic acne, mm -hmm. and then you just mentioned cystic acne when I was in maybe 16, 17 years old, and you know, when you're a teenager, it's it's the end of the world. So talk to us a little bit about these different types of acnes that we're seeing on the skin. Well, you have um, blackheads and you have whiteheads, um, papules and pustules and nodules. Um, this is a, an example of their skin with a whitehead and the oil, and the bacteria okay. develops into the, the gland, and if it's not touched, it could stay just like a whitehead and then resort back down. But if it gets aggravated, then the bacteria goes in and it causes a lot of inflammation. Right. If you pick an acne, then it could actually rupture a quarter out, and then three quarters ruptures under here. The body sees it, it doesn't need it anymore. So you're actually making it worse when you... And, and then a small little white bump turns into a big red area, and then you can actually damage the collagen and then get some acne scarring um, that can occur here. So um, untreated acne, as in a teenager, it could actually continue on and becoming um, more of a scarring, a permanent scarring. Mm -hmm. um, then you have blackheads, which is basically this area that's open and it's oxidized by the air. Like if you cut an apple and, you cut, and it turns brown. Right. And then there's the deeper cystic ones that are down in this area here um, that causes the big bulge and then you can get a larger infection like a furuncle or a carbuncle. I mean, you need to definitely take some antibiotics for that um, and take care of it topically as well. Now, Dr. Longwell, what causes the acne to begin with? We hear about diet, we hear about age, we hear about hormones, even is it hereditary? So how, what causes it? Usually genetics is a very important component to the acne, um, as well as uh, the hormones. And during the teenage years and as they're going through adolescence, their hormones are getting a little bit more activated um, and there's more cortisol. When you have an increase of, of um, certain hormones, that will actually cause the gland to proliferate and then the bacteria gets in there from the, in the, the skin and it gets out of hand, um, that really seems to be a, a big cause. Mm -hmm. Sometimes milk or chocolate, certain foods can aggravate it. So um, that is true, because sometimes certain, they say too much patient, sugar can aggravate. Yes, yes. Some, some people who are take, eating more milk, more dairy seems to affect them, but that's more of like a genetic thing as well. Anything can cause inflammation. Right. Certain foods and people can cause more inflammation than other people. Um, also, if you're in like more humid climates, then you're sweating more and the more the oils, and then your, or your skin can get clogged. Like South Florida, you mean? Yes, just like South Florida. <laughs> like South Florida. So cleansing is really important. Right. Um, and as well as putting topical treatments that can aggravate the skin um, and clog it, and just manipulation. Like if you're using your cell phone constantly on your face, you can cause, you could just imagine a cell phone being pushed down on this, past, mm -hmm. this pustule 
pushing it down and causing more oh, of an inflammation. Producing more of that mm -hmm. oil and just as think well. of not only one, but multiple. Multiple, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that explanation, Doctor. We'll have you come right in. And there's actually a common areas for acne, correct? I mean, there's certain parts of the body that you're more prone to see this acne at, and we, we have a list. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, um, typically uh, we see it on the face. Uh, if patients are having, like they're exercising or working out, um, they could be on their chest or back. If they're using perfume in these areas um, or cologne, they also can break really? out. Really? Okay. Um, I've seen patients, you know, in their shoulders, it's in areas where you can touch. If you start touching and playing with it, it aggravates it. Um, so there's an area on the upper arms, patients think it's acne, but it's actually a type of eczema called um, keratosis pilaris. Okay. And commonly patients pick it and then it turns into a, an irritated acne bump, but it's really a condition that's related so it's to eczema. something more. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And then the buttock um, from sweating or wearing your workout clothes and not changing. Mm -hmm. uh, typically um, we see acne in those areas, the face and the neck, the back, chest. Now is acne more prevalent in men or women? Well, it seems to be more prevalent in men it, per se, um, the cystic one, okay. um, causing more of a scarring type of acne mm -hmm. because of the, their hormones. However, the um, women are definitely complain about it more because they're using a lot of makeups and creams and things like that can clog it. But um, on, on average, adolescent wise, it's more male. Wow. Okay, I want to get into the acne scars mm -hmm. because I think that's really important. I know for myself, I, I can't really tell right now because I have makeup on, but I do have some leftover acne scars from that cystic acne, and I'm always looking for ways to treat it, to minimize mm -hmm. it. So how do you treat it, and what are acne scars? Let's start off with that. Well, the acne scar is an area where the acne has gone down into the, the dermis and causing more of a damage or um, in the collagen that was not able to repair itself, right. so it's causing an indentation. We would like to try to treat the acne before it gets to that point. So by taking, giving oral antibiotics, topical treatments, um, lasers, uh, IPLs, things like that to help mm -hmm. prevent the depth of the okay. cystic acne. If it happens that you had a cystic acne and you didn't pick it, it just happens that the acne right. healed that way. Then we have lasers to help build collagen, which is like a vascular mm -hmm. laser. We have Fraxo, which would um, iron out the, the scar actually stimulate collagen. Right. We can fill with fillers with like hyaluronic acids. Um, and also there's um, threads that we can pull and stretch. As time goes on, your skin gets more lax and we could pull it back. Right. Um, so, and then there's also um, mild peels like glycolic peels or salicylic acid peels. Microneedling now with mm -hmm. your um, PRP, which is your stem cells with growth factor to put on top of the skin to help mainly build collagen to uplift that dermis so your scar isn't so indented. So it creates sort of uh, the injury, correct? Is that how it, it works with the, with the microneedling and the PRPs? They create sort of injury so your body produces that collagen? Right, it's all about little micro controlled injuries so that you get a better collagen base and it, it improves the scar. Now when you have a patient come in with acne, which I'm, I'm sure you have many, how do you determine how to treat that acne? Well, it's based on the I look at the patient first, and then I try to figure out what their, would act, their environment is and if they're able to swallow antibiotics or need, if they're actually going to wash their face twice a day. Mm -hmm. And then we, we work together and work with the parents. Um, then I also teach them how to wash their face, make sure that they're doing a good cleansing with a good product like benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid. We also use topical treatments. I have right. to be realistic. If, the, if I see a teenager that's not going to be using a product, then I have to pick, I choose one thing so they can do just at nighttime. But is it more, is a topical or an oral medicine more effective than the other? Depends. Or? Sometimes I'll put them on the oral medicine because I want to get a jump start okay. and then keep them on topical to maintain it. Okay. And yet that's also determined by age and like you said, you have sort of like an individual. It's you kind of figure it out <laughs> what, you, yeah. what you need. Now, I know there's some medication. I remember growing up, uh, one of the ones they would give you was Accutane. And Accutane is really effective when it comes to treating a severe case of acne. Is, is that still used or? Yes, Accutane um, is a wonderful medication for patients that really need it and to prevent the scarring. Um, it helps prevent that indented scarring that patients have right. difficulty treating. Um, not every patient is a candidate for Accutane because it is six months of taking the right. medication and there are lots of side effects if we know that the patient um, is a possible drinks or has some issues at home um, that would not be conducive for them to take right. the medication. We'd, I have to be able to trust that patient Absolutely. to take the medication. Um, 
then I would give them the medication if it's if they're warranted. It it works great. They'll after six months, the patients never have an, another pimple usually. Wow. Um, and then we can work on the scarring with types of lasers that are non-invasive. Home remedies. You know, you're always going to get someone at home that they read something. I mean, at least for me, it was a egg white mask. You put egg white on your face, it's going to help your acne, it's going to go away. Do home remedies work? So, I mean, you know, some people use toothpaste. I've had patients come in, they've used um, lemon or honey. Um, they're in the office now seeing me for treatment. So <laughs> I guess it, it, it does temporarily help. Right. Um, there really isn't a complete cure for acne. It's more controlled anyway. So, so there's, there's not a way to prevent it. Right. You're going to have acne if, if you're prone if, to it. If you're prone to it, then you also have to avoid what's causing it. Right. All right. This is so informative and we have so much more coming up. A common skin condition that can affect anyone. We were talking about rosacea. And later, how to manage aging skin. You're watching The Health Channel on South Florida PBS. Don't forget to give us a call at 855-796-4475. Also, follow us on social media at All Health TV and visit our website, allhealthtv.com, so you can submit questions for the experts like Dr. Longwell and watch videos from previous episodes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Emily is thinking about taking a dietary supplement. She knows she should try to get her vitamins and minerals from the food she eats, but she doesn't always have the chance to eat right. And with more than 50,000 dietary supplements on the market, like a lot of other people, Emily has questions. Like how much vitamin A is good for you and how much is too much? If something's natural, doesn't it mean it's safe? Can folic acid prevent birth defects? Should we be taking calcium and vitamin D supplements? Luckily, there's a place everyone can go for answers. It's the website of the Office of Dietary Supplements. We're part of the National Institutes of Health, and since 1995, we've been conducting, funding, and evaluating research that we use to educate the public, giving Emily plenty of information she can share and discuss with her health care providers. We're ODS for what you need to know about dietary supplements. It started with the original care package and millions more like it. Passed from hand to hand across land and sea to help survivors in the aftermath of war. As we grew, we found better ways to help those in need. Ways to make a real difference, not just today, but tomorrow as well. Be the difference in people's lives. Help deliver lasting change at care.org. Day, not for myself, but for every tail wagger, sloppy kisser, and curtain ninja. I stand here for each one of the nearly 4,100 dogs and cats killed in shelters each day, asking you to join our cause and help us make sure every best friend has a chance to meet one of their own. With Best Friends Animal Society leading the charge and your help, we can save them all. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio, and with me is Dr. Deborah Longwell, a dermatologist at Baptist Health, South Florida. If you have a dermatology question for the doctor, give us a call, pick up that phone. That number is 855-796-4475. Redness, swelling, 
Occasional eye problems are all possible symptoms of rosacea. So let's get down to it. What is rosacea? Rosacea is a type of adult acne with redness, swelling, itching. Um, I, patients get that dilation of the blood vessels, broken capillaries. Um, they feel oily, but they're dry. There's actually ocular rosacea, too, where you feel like you have gritty sand in your eyes. Um, certain things can trigger it, like foods and um, different things that you wouldn't even think about. Right. And now, you, you talk about eyes, so it's part of rosacea. Is it, you feel like kind of an irritation? Is that yeah, it? you feel like sand gritty in your eyes. Mm -hmm. They're constantly red. Um, you might go to the eye doctor and they'll say blepharitis or ocular rosacea. And it's treated um, similarly with, with um, the same products that we use, which is usually an antibiotic called doxycycline. Mm -hmm. And then there's a time-released doxycycline called Oratia, which is a 40 milligram dosage. So it doesn't act as an antibiotic, it acts more like an anti-inflammatory. Got it. Now, there are symptoms to rosacea, and that's the good news that we, you can be able to see it and treat it. And walk me through some of these sy symptoms, um, Dr. Longwell. We have redness, swelling, thickening skin. Talk to me about how you identify these in patients. Well, first the patient comes in and they end up um, having just diffuse redness on their skin. Right. They, they'll say, when I'm embarrassed, my face flushes. Or when I'm in a, a like I'm upset, my face flushes. Um, or I'm in a hot room, my face flushes. Then after the flushing, if you, you don't really take care of the rosacea, it can turn into redness that's permanently there with pimples, broken capillaries, some pustules, some just more diffuse type of um, like a dryness on right. the skin. And then if it's still not treated, then you can get the little bit of a rhinophyma, mm -hmm. which is that thickening of the nose, like um, the CW Fields look. You have, I noticed with patients with rosacea, you, there's almost, you can see the little veins. Correct. Is this normal? I mean, I know it's one of the symptoms, yeah. of, like the little blood vessels. The little blood vessels are usually around the nose, even the cheeks, um, that don't go away, even with the flushing as it, it goes away. We um, use a machine called an IPL, mm -hmm. um, which is the light system that zaps those the veins away. Um, and then they have patients have to avoid things that will make it worse, like red wine, spicy food, chocolate, believe it or not, eggplant, avocado, uh, spinach. <gasps> no avocado. No yeah. avocado, right, for, your, for, for patients with rosacea. Right. Wow. That's one of the triggers, yes. Unbelievable. Now, how early do symptoms start appearing? Um, I've seen patients that are in their teenage years with a diffuse bit, a bit of redness, and their mom is sitting right there, and, and she's got rosacea, and the mom wants to know, where does she get it? And I look right. at mom, and I say, well, it could be maybe <laughs> from you, too. Can rosacea be hereditary? Yes, it is. It um, is hereditary. Yes. We actually have a caller, Dr. Longwell. We have oh. Mabel from Boca. Hi, Mabel. Hi, Mabel. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for calling. What is your question for Dr. Longwell? I'm noticing, I'm in my early 30s, and I'm noticing like a ton of breakouts, like mostly whiteheads. Is it bad if I pop these? Oh. She That's said, a great question, Mabel. Yeah. Can You can answer her, Dr. Yeah, she said, um, she said it's on her forehead? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Mabel, on your forehead, you say? I mean, it's a little bit of a mixture. Sometimes it's on my forehead, and sometimes it's like around my, um, like the nose area. Yeah, I, I would not suggest um, actually popping them because it, you'll end up possibly scarring and causing more of an indentation. Uh, I would suggest more of a, washing your face with a gentle type of cleanser with a washcloth, and then maybe finding some um, topical treatment. Um, have you been prescribed anything before? No, I haven't. Yeah. Um, well. Um, I would say cleanse and then maybe um, see your local dermatologist and see if there's something that you can apply on there, as well as um, and take away anything that may be causing it, like a moisturizer that's extra oily or a new makeup that may have clogged your pores in the first place. Thank you so much for calling in, Mabel. Okay, so the American Academy of Dermatology has some do's and don'ts for rosacea. Mm -hmm. So let's get a closer look at how this condition is managed by watching the video. Take a look. Rosacea is a common skin condition. It often begins with a tendency to blush or flush more easily than others. Over time, redness may become permanent. To help manage rosacea, dermatologists offer these tips. Learn what foods and drinks, if any, cause your rosacea to flare. For many people, common culprits are spicy foods, hot drinks, 
anything that contains caffeine and red wine. Keeping a journal of what you eat and drink and when your rosacea flares can help you discover which foods and beverages cause your rosacea to flare. Although drinking alcohol can worsen rosacea, the condition can be just as severe in someone who does not drink alcohol. Extremely hot and cold temperatures often aggravate rosacea. You can reduce flare-ups by not overheating. Protect your face from wind and cold. Covering your face with a scarf helps protect your skin. Just make sure that the material touching your face is not made of wool or fabric that feels rough to the touch. These fabrics can irritate the skin. Sun exposure can cause rosacea to flare. Applying a sunscreen before going outside helps to protect the skin, provided the product does not contain ingredients that irritate the skin. Look for sunscreens containing zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, as these ingredients are the least irritating. Look for sunscreen that has broad spectrum protection, a sun protection factor, SPF, of at least 30. A sunscreen that contains silicone can also help protect the skin and minimize stinging and redness. On the list of ingredients, silicone may be called dimethicone or cyclomethicone. Skin care can help alleviate rosacea or make it worse. For best results, avoid rubbing, scrubbing, or massaging the face. When using hairspray, make sure the spray does not get on your face. Keep your skin care routine simple. The fewer products you use, the better. When it first develops, rosacea may come and go on its own. Your rosacea may be more easily treated when you first start noticing changes in your skin. We're going to talk more about those skincare tips, but first let's talk about triggers and the okay. triggers that can cause a rosacea. Mm -hmm. So things like temperature, extreme temperatures, wind, sunlight. We have a graphic here that shows these triggers. Talk to me about these, Dr. Longwell. Well, anything that's going to be extreme, like um, heat, humidity, if you're out skiing in the, in the winter and, and, um, and the cold is, is hitting your skin, anything that's going to make your skin more red, hot temperature drinks. So they'll, my patients say, well, I can't drink coffee anymore, doctor. I said, no, 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 you can drink coffee. Right. It's just that you don't want to have a hot cup of coffee and let the steam go in your face. Also, red wine um, and alcohol can notice you feel more red afterwards. Mm -hmm. So um, avoid that. Switch to white wine. That's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> and when you exercise, exercise is good for stress, um, but you want to cool your face down. You don't want to be doing a class outside in the in the heat of Florida. Um, and then any type of products that may sting, like a witch hazel or alcohol um, on your skin that may make it more red. Um, then there's different foods, like I would mention the avocado, um, yogurt, Right. Um, some cheeses, some some dairy products, but it doesn't mean that every one thing of these foods are you're going to be your trigger. It's just that you have to kind of figure out right. and be a more of a detective for yourself. Now, when you have rosacea, you have a flare-up. How long do these flare-ups last? Is a flare-up consist of a couple of days? It could be a little more prolonged. Some patients have um, just like one little spot on their skin and then it goes away. Right. Um, and then it can get aggravated by increased stress. The patients obviously you start panicking, putting everything on your face and then those things can actually aggravate it. Some patients will, a friend of them will tell them, oh, put a cortisone on your skin. Well, cortisone or steroid will calm the problem down, but then afterwards, when you stop using it, it flares it and then it becomes a vicious cycle. Right. So it's a quick fix so you can walk out the door but in the end, it's not good because you end up having being coming worse. So right. we have to find the right product that would actually help maintain and control it. So let's discuss beyond the quick fix. How do you treat rosacea? And what are some ways to prevent from having a flare-up? Well, we treat it with mild cleansers, some things with green tea in them, um, some certain sulfur or salicylic acid type of preparations. Um, as cleansers as well as topicals. We have um, metronidazoles, which are the um, the group or the Sulantra, those are some medications that we give by prescription that calm down the Demodex mite. The Demodex mite is the mite that's found on right. people, but some patients with rosacea have a, a actual accumulation of them and they have a dryness on their right. skin and if this gets aggravated, it gets more red. So we want to control that with some topical prescriptions items. Um, also some staying away from the heat and the humidity. Um, and we also have types of lasers in the office to help calm down that redness. But the biggest thing for rosacea is avoidance 
and avoid the things that you know that make it worse. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that we had, we're talking off our break, I have a very dear friend who's pregnant, and actually, that's when her rosacea began in pregnancy. And you actually said you have a lot of women who are pregnant in your office who have rosacea. Can you treat rosacea while pregnant? And what are some tips for, for pregnant women, especially in this humidity? Right. So mainly, um, you know, with pregnancy, everything kind of grows and you swell and mm -hmm. dilate the blood vessels. So we want to just calm that down the best we can. So stay indoors where it's cooler. Um, cool your cool your face down with some you know cool waters and um, compresses. Right. There are topical if you need antibiotics. Um, some patients we can give erythromycin topically. We can also um, calm down the demodex mites with products that aren't okay for pregnancy. Um, and then facials without lots of steam in the face. So mild. Mild, but not the big heavy steam. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of patients, what they'll do is they'll get that high powered mirror and they'll spend oh. hours in front of it trying to pick out everything, the little thing that they see. I would recommend that they take that mirror and put it away in the closet and never find it again. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that with very information, so much information and thank you for that. So if you have questions for the doctors, call us at our toll free number. It's 855. 796-4475 or visit our website allhealthtv.com where you can submit questions for the experts or watch videos from previous episodes. Dr. Longwell will be back, so don't go anywhere. Nineteen forty five to nineteen sixty five. People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C a leading cause of liver cancer. And people can live with hepatitis C for decades without any symptoms. The good news? Now, treatments are available that can cure hepatitis C. So if you were born from 1945 to 1965, talk to your doctor about getting a blood test for hepatitis C. It's the only way to know. deserves a decent place to live. Everyone. When a future homeowner partners with Habitat for Humanity to build or improve a home, they build a better future for themselves and their families. For my family. For my family. For, for my, my family. family. With a little help, we all have the potential to stand on our own. Potential. 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 Visit Habitat.org to provide help to families like these today. At Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. 30 years of pioneering minimally invasive techniques, 30 years of hard work and dedication by our top tier leadership and world-renowned physicians and clinical staff, creating a world-class comprehensive heart and vascular care center unlike any other, committed to our guiding principles of outstanding quality care, continuous innovation, and a drive to save lives. Three decades of excellence are the foundation for our exciting new expansion, a state-of-the-art facility, a first-in-the-world environment with the latest technology. Recognized as one of America's best hospitals, we're proud of our history and committed to providing the best care today and in the future. We are innovators. We are leaders. We are Miami Cardiac and Vascular Institute at Baptist Health South Florida.
Welcome back to the health channel. All health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio. With me is Dr. Deborah Longwell, a dermatologist at Baptist Health, South Florida. Now, if you have questions for Dr. Longwell, give us a call, 855-796-4475. We'd love to hear from you. So there's a lot that can happen to our skin. And one thing that changes is skin pigmentation. Give us an example of that that you treat, doctor. And I know that there are a lot of facts that you want to share with our viewers today about skin pigmentation. So typically, patients will come in with patches of um, pigmentation on their cheeks. But there's also patients that come in for depigmentation or loss of pigmentation, right. which is very difficult um, to treat. The majority of the patients are coming in with the pigmentation from birth control, pregnancies, mm -hmm. or just time. Now, what is skin pigmentation exactly? Is it the discoloration of skin? What, what is it? It's the in hyperpigmentation or more pigmentation is the increase of mel melanin from the melanocytes okay. on the skin. And it's usually on topical areas of sun exposure around the forehead, uh, on the upper lip after waxing, okay. um, on the cheek area from birth control, in this area of the chest, because you're driving your car, you don't realize you're getting sun on your chest, in the area of the neck, you can get some pigmentation. You notice that um, there's just a complete clearing of no pigmentation here, but then there's a lot more pigmentation here because your chin is now protected all these years while you're driving. Right, and, and on the side, it kind of gets coming, you right mm -hmm. here on the side. Your arm, um, the arms of pigmentation, you'll see um, as time goes on, people having more pigmentation on the forearm, mm -hmm. on the left side because it's your driving Bing. side. And if you're on your right side, it'd be passenger, obviously. So this is all happen, is it, would you call it natural? Because some of it is natural, but you mentioned birth control and you mentioned the waxing, so not it's not all natural. Well, it's it's influenced um, by sun exposure. Okay. So if you look at um, air, patients have worn a one piece all their life, because mm -hmm. you know we do body checks for skin cancer in the office. Right. And the majority of the skin cancer is on the arms and, and or in the face and the legs. But if they wore a shirt or or bathing like a one piece bathing suit that skin is creamy white and not one spot. Right. So sun does induce the pigmentation. Now, what are some different ways of treating skin pigmentation? Um, well, if a patient's coming in for the patches where we call the mask of pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, we actually have to use topical treatments, um, going easing into types of light peels, light laser, because if we do too much, uh, too, too, if we're not if we are too aggressive and we actually cause more inflammation, the patient will um, cause more pigmentation afterwards. Wow, um, okay. And then not to forget to wear sunblock all the time. You're never out of the woods with the pigmentation. It's always gonna be with you. Um, it'll be great for two weeks and then you'll get late, patients get lazy, they don't put the sunblock on mm -hmm. and then the pigmentation comes back. So it's important to note that with skin pigmentation, it's not that it goes away 100%. Like you said, it can go away for certain signs, but it's always in your. It's always there. It's always there. Like I have patients that have had fraxel treatments, which is an ablative laser that takes off the top mm -hmm. layer of the skin, and they're so happy. And then two weeks later, their pigmentation comes back, and it's worse because th the inflammation or the trauma from the laser plus the sun exposure outside right. is activating these melanocytes to make more melanin in response. Wow. What other forms of treatments do you use as well? Um, we do microneedling with the PRP, um, which is a mild peel um, with the little tiny needles, and we're taking your um, stem cells with growth factor to help heal the skin faster. Mm -hmm. But we do it very gradually. We also are doing mild um, uh, hydrofacials and, and chemical peels that are not actually causing a lot of the skin to come off, but very mildly and topical treatments consistently. Topical treatments consistently. Actually, we have another caller, mm. Dr. Longo. We have Robert from Pompano. Hi, Robert. Robert? I think we have, might have lost our caller. Mm. But as we get, we try to get him back, let's ta keep talking about the skin pigmentation. Does your, does your skin change or is it more, it becomes, is it damaged? How, how would a dermatologist refer to that? Well, this, um, over time with sun, repetitive sun exposure, the skin does thin. Mm -hmm. And then the increase in melanocytes starts to cause the um, increasing the melanin, causing the more pigmentation. We have a graphic actually, it's gonna show us a little bit of that and you can speak to that. Dr. Long will be very helpful for our viewers at home. And we can get that up. Okay, this is a fraxel treatment that we're, okay. we're doing. Um, we're ironing the skin off. It's little micro injuries into the uh, dermis mm -hmm. and it's removing the pigmentation as well as um, fine lines and wrinkles. 
the wonderful thing about the Fraxel is we're able to do it in various uh, sessions. We're not hitting 100% of your skin. Right. We're hitting various, um, like 20%, 30%, maybe even 60%, but we're going to do it gradually because each patient's skin mm -hmm. type can handle, um, it needs to be treated differently. And now how effective is this treatment? It is effective as long as you take care of what we've helped. Absolutely. You have to follow doctor's orders, yes. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is there a difference between people who are born with skin pigmentation and those that get it over time? Um, well, your patients that are born with a pig skin pigmentation, with like a depigmentation with like a vitiligo, that would be something different from pigmentation that you're getting damaged from the mm -hmm. sun. Um, and then pigmentation that there are moles. Patients are born with moles right. on their skin, and those moles can change over time through sun exposure or just environmental influences by rubbing like a, something on the like your shirt or something mm -hmm. over time. So we want to make sure that um, the patients that are born with pigments or moles, because moles are pigmented, right. we want to get those checked. And then there's pigmentation from sun damage, which are patches that are more of a cosmetic element. And that screening is so important. I think we have Robert back on the line. Robert, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Thank you so much for oh. calling in. A question for a dermatologist. I've had uh, lasers, I've had uh, acne and skin aging. I'm in my late 50s and a lot of sun exposure. Is there anything I can try to do on a continual basis over the counter to try to reduce one the acne scarring and the aging of the skin? Well, number one, you would make sure that you're using a sunblock that has titanium or zinc oxide to prevent any more damage of the skin. And also, there are um, products over the counter with vitamin C's and peptides that you could use to help increase the oxygen and increase um, mm -hmm. collagen replication. And um, being using gentle cleansers um, as so you don't want to cause too much irritation. Anything that can help acne scars over the counter or is that something more they need to see a dermatologist for? Probably more for a dermatologist because the, the depth of the acne scars um, are fairly deep in the dermis and need probably a filler uh, treatment or continued lasers to the specific spots. That's a great question, Robert. Thank you so much for calling in. We, I have another graphic that I want to show you, Dr. Longwell. And this is someone with uh, melasma, and it's the skin pigmentation issue we were talking about. Talk to me about this patient. Well, I'm sorry, not the patient, but the photo and what we're seeing here. Okay, so on the, the, on the left is a patient that we typically see with pigmentation from just sun exposure over time and hormones, um, hormonal um, effect. And it's so difficult to treat this. We use topical treatments that have hydroquinone and without hydroquinone. Um, this patient would probably be using something without hydroquinone um, on a regular basis with the titanium or zinc oxide sunblock. And then the um, on the right, it's kind of depicting and showing you just like what the skin looks like. And then the pigmentation um, is showing like a little bit of a level on the epidermis. If you have pigmentation on more superficial, it's a little easier to remove right. with like your microneedling or microdermabrasion. But it, usually the pigmentation is fairly deep and that's where um, we have more difficulty mm -hmm. where you have to continue using a retinol or retin-A um, and also vitamin C's, mm -hmm. lighteners that don't have um, the hydroquinone for long term. You mentioned retin-A, retinol. I think this is something that we hear often, that mm -hmm. word. What is it? It's a, it's a type of, of, we were talking about it with an Accutane, like mm -hmm. a vitamin A, and it helps with building collagen and, and cell turnover. Um, as long as we have continued cell turn, turnover, we're able to, and we're generating new cells, we're able to bring that other pigmentation and off, and then we'll also be able to increase the thickness of the epidermis so you have more youthful skin. Now, it's important to mention that sometimes big skin pigmentation issues can mean other health issues. Is this correct? Is it something tied into mental health issues? Um, well, pigmentation, um, we, you can have pigment, increased pigmentation uh, on the back of the neck, um, in, in the areas of, of the axilla or in the groin, and that could be from um, just like if you're a little overweight and rubbing, or mm -hmm. it, can, uh, sig it could be significant for a thyroid condition right. or diabetes, um, and that's also a genetic condition, um, which you would want to check. Now, what about sun sensitivity? Um, sun sensitivity, well, if you're... If you have any of the treatments, you're obviously you want to stay out of the sun and you're right. going to be more sensitive. And um, if you're taking a medication um, that could be, make you sun sensitive, giving you more redness, then after that redness goes away, you could be left with brown pigmentation. If someone is, consider if someone is considering treatment for mm -hmm. skin pigmentation, what should they know? Um, 
they should make sure they're using your sunblock. They should make sure that if they're having any treatments, um, like a laser or bile peel, to stop the retinols three mm -hmm. to four days prior. Glycolic as well, if you're going to treat with glycolic. Um, and then it's that they should be patient with their skin right. because you just can't tear off your skin and get new skin with pigmentation. You have to be gentle, gradual, and be patient. Is treatment usually a preference amongst patients? How does, what do you normally see when someone walks into the office with uh, skin pigmentation? The patients usually want to just take, go and have a laser and just they think that they can take right. off all their skin and then they get new skin and they'll, they'll have a nice white creamy skin. It's a process. It's a process. And we explain that to them with giving them topical treatments first for a good six weeks. Mm -hmm. Then we can start moving them into a mild type of treatment depending on if they can have downtime for a week, right. which means a, a swelling and a little bit of a peeling for a week, and then continue on their daily life. Um, I don't recommend like major um, deep chemical peels where your skin is sloughed off um, for these types of pigmentation changes. And now how soon can you see results from treatment from first skin pigmentation? Usually it takes about two to three months. Okay. Um, but it's gradual, and then you're going to just notice that you're not having to put your concealer or makeup on to cover it up. So that patience is important. Mm -hmm. Patience. <laughs> All right, up next, tips for your aging skin. And summer is wrapping up. Well, I don't know about here in South Florida, but we will get the latest tips from Dr. Longwell. What you need to know to get ready for the holidays, and they will come very quickly. You're watching the Health Channel on South Florida PBS. Don't forget to give us a call if you'd like to ask the doctor a question. The toll-free number is 855-796-4475. Or visit our website, allhealthtv.com, where you can submit questions for the experts and watch videos from previous episodes. We'll be right back. Wonder if you should get tested for colorectal cancer? Is it really that common? It is. It's the second leading cancer killer in the U.S. I don't have symptoms. It doesn't always cause symptoms, especially early on. And screening helps prevent the disease. Oh, how? By finding precancerous polyps so they can be removed. But that test. There's more than one screening test. If you're 50 or older, talk to your doctor about which one is right for you. Colorectal cancer screening really does save lives. through 1965 have the highest rates of hepatitis C, but most don't know they're infected? People can live for decades without symptoms, but over time, hepatitis C can cause serious health problems. If you were born during these years, the CDC now recommends that you get a blood test for hepatitis C, so talk to your doctor and find out if you have hepatitis C. It could save your life. some migraines uh, that it looks like the nerves coming out of either the forehead or the back of the head gets caught or under pressure for some reason. We have identified that if you treat the compression, you can treat the migraines. So for us, it's very important. Patient selection is probably the most important thing on our end. Um, Botox, because it relaxes the muscles around the nerves, seems to be a, a good bellwether of people who will respond to surgery. The best test is then to give a numbing medicine, an anesthetic block to those nerves while they have a headache. And if the headache goes away, then you have very good evidence that this is a nerve that can be treated. People who come in and say, you know, my headache always starts, you know, right above my left eye and it comes across my scalp and it's this throbbing sensation uh, and it always starts the same way happens to me multiple times a week, and then if you go and you numb that nerve up and the headache goes away, then you have very good evidence that, that this is a person who would probably benefit uh, from surgery. Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate. 
but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. Welcome back to the Health Channel, all health, all the time. I'm Kathy Buccio. With me is Dr. Deborah Longwell, a dermatologist at Baptist Health, South Florida. If you have questions for Dr. Longwell, give me a call or give us a call. The toll-free number is 855-796-4475. Now we're talking about all things dermatology, and I think one something that's really important is to how our skin changes as we age. I think that it's kind of a hard thing for us to, to grasp and to deal with. So tell us what happens to our skin over time, Dr. Longwell. Well, our skin becomes thinner, drier. Um, we get more brown spots. We have um, tear, more tears uh, because our skin's, the dermis is not as thick. Um, we become more wrinkly. Our, our bone structure starts to shrink. So our right. skin, our wrapping becomes more and more like an accordion. And, um, and the more sun exposure over time, the more damage the skin gets, the thinner, the more likely you get the bruising that looks like, um, mm -hmm. like purple marks all over the arm. Right, and that's something I wanted to touch upon that we were talking about in our last segment, but we never got to talk about. It was sunspots, and sunspots are so common, especially here, not just it, from being in the sun, but as we age as well. What are sunspots? So we can get sunspots um, on our back and our chest just because of going to the beach, mm -hmm. and that's usually a type of fungus that we get treated by par particular medications. Oh, it's a fungus. There, yeah, okay. those, those types of spots. Then we have spots that are little brown spots that some people say, oh, I have liver spots, which has nothing to do with the liver. Right. Um, and then it's just from repetitive sun exposure. Um, or if you're getting your hands done you know, and gel and manicure and you get, you're get you putting your hands constantly in the light, you can increase the amount of light um, or UV to mm -hmm. your hands and you get more brown spots from that. We use a treatment um, to zap those away. So but you can remove them, the, skin, the, the sunspots? It, you can. And then there's other spots like melanomas or, or basal cells or squamous cells that, we, that are different from actual giant freckles. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to make sure that that gets checked on a patient at least once a year to make sure you don't have something like that. Absolutely. We have a caller. Is that Florine from Miami? Florine? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I saw a clip on this channel about a woman complaining about her arms itching and they advised her to have a liver test. What I'd like to know, I have the same problem. My arms itch, sometimes my head itches. Other than using hydrocortisone cream, what is that liver test? Then you would wanna evaluate, uh, a, it's a simple blood test and see what your uh, liver uh, enzymes and if your bilirubin um, levels are elevated or not. And also you can itch from um, cholesterol medications that can overly dry your skin, because mm -hmm. um, that's what it's doing, is taking down the fats in your bone, right. your system. So I would um, get evaluated by um, your physician in regards to why you could be itching. That's a good question. Thank you so much, Florine, for calling into the show. Now, the signs of aging, are they reversible? I think we all want that magic potion that's gonna turn back the clock like at least 20 years for us. Well, I think that's our biggest mission right now is right. to turn that clock back. Um, however, we, we do best we can. We have mm -hmm. different uh, treatments in the office to help with the thinning of the skin and also um, with the um, pigmentation. We have Fraxel, which stimulates the collagen. We are actually doing um, injections of um, Sculpture or polyalkylic acid into areas that you wouldn't even believe that were that you realize the tops of your knees are wrinkly, your elbows, the right. chest area to increase the collagen. There, we're also putting because you're getting work done on your face, you're getting work done different parts of your body. But we, I mean, the hands tell all, right? right. The, the, the neck and the hands. Mm -hmm. So we're we're conscious. Patients are now are injecting products into the hands to increase the volume to so you don't have look so bony and mm -hmm. um, hide the veins. We're taking care of the superficial aspect of the skin with the Fraxels, IPLs, topical treatments with retinols and glycolics and vitamin C's, lighteners. Um, same thing for the chest and the neck. It's and also protecting from the sun, so you're not 
you're not uh, damaging what you're, right. you're trying to improve. I know there are preventive measures. We have a graphic that gives us some tips of how we can slow down or better the aging process. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through some of these, Doc? Um, well, self-tanner. Um, that would so you don't have to feel like you're getting tan all the time mm -hmm. and it's obviously smoking smoking is a real problem because it's basically choking off all the oxygen supply to every part of your body um, and it gives you that dull looking skin as well yes it's and it's just it's a lot of bad chemicals that your body's uh, not able to tolerate it's mm -hmm. all poison and then um, the repetitive facial expressions like if you're constantly moving or frowning um, that's what we use Botox for so we don't right. show concern uh, eating healthy and well-balanced diets that have uh, a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. for the antioxidants drinking less alcohol because that also is increasing your sugar level and the sugar is causing more inflammation which damages um, right. your body and exercise um, most of the days by doing whatever you can between yoga or walking or exercise um, um, by increasing your lymphatic flow and bringing more blood supply to your every part of your body. Cleansing gently. Um, you don't remember your skin's not the pot, bottom of a pot where you have to scrub it down. And um, washing your face twice a day and sweat heavily. Um, you want to just make sure that if you whatever your um, whatever activity you're doing, you're taking the, that. Um, you're cleansing gently and getting rid of the um, oils and the pollution away. Um, moisturize daily, but if you're going to use a moisturizer during the day, make sure it's not too oily for your skin type. And that it has sunblock. <laughs> yes, it has the sunblock with the titanium or the zinc. And stop using skin products that sting or burn. Anything that irritates your skin causes more inflammation and that's not good for and you. And sometimes people think the opposite. If it's stinging, it's burning, it's working. No, it's not. No. If anything you use that stings or burns, discontinue. So how, mu how much can following tips like these reduce or slow down the aging process? Well, the aging process um, is genetic mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the environmental influences between the pollution, the um, sun um, environments like real extreme cold or extreme hot, um, and also getting enough sleep if you're uh, you know, up all 24 hours, that's gonna continue to make you age. So um, it, everyone should knows how to take care of themselves. They should right. just follow the, what we're supposed to do. Eat well, sleep well, drink plenty of water, and, um, and not get too stressed out. So I should tell my toddlers, let mommy sleep so she can look beautiful. Yes. Yes. There right? is something about beauty sleep. <laughs> there is something about beauty sleep. Now, mm -hmm. what are some common age-related skin issues that you see in your patients? We see, um, let's see, skin, um, we see lots of wrinkles, pigmentation. Mm -hmm. um, we see patients that are coming in with like little, little bumps that weren't there. Um, all over their body. We'll see damaged skin from um, sun exposure, non-sun exposure. Uh, we see a variety of things right. in the office. Um, and we have pretty much everything available to help repair the skin. Now, when are they deemed serious? Well, if a patient comes in with a, a, a black mole that mm -hmm. they've never seen before, um, especially we were talking, I think, earlier about something on the, on the nail. Yes, you, you, know, you, you blew me away with that. I thought I knew everything about melanoma, mm -hmm. and then you said you can actually get melanoma of the nail, of yes. the nail bed. So, so um, you know, when you get your nails done, be conscious about what's underneath your nail polish if you're constantly, if you're wearing gels or, um, and then see if there's a new spot there, and because that could be, uh, right. It could be dangerous and it would need to be evaluated or something that's not healing or bleeding or scaly and it just happens to grow in, in areas that you don't really notice like your scalp or under your arms or in your privates. Mm -hmm. Just being conscious of something right. that you never, if you haven't seen it before, get it evaluated because it could save your life. Absolutely, that's crucial. Now, we, you get a patient that comes in and you know it's the start of summer, so how do we get ready for summer? I have to wear my sunscreen, but now end of summer, we may have to go into a different season, a different climate. How do you get ready for that? Well, now a lot of patients are coming in with their post tan and they're peeling. Mm -hmm. um, and, so, you're, and you're giving them that finger, that judgy finger, like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, now I said, well, you, let's use a mild mo um, moisturizer to help repair the skin, um, gentle cleansers. And, um, we're, you know, we're in South Florida, so we always right. have to be conscious. Um, if you want to maintain your skin so that it doesn't get more pigmented, as well as more wrinkled, continue using your sunblock on a regular basis and take care of it. Um, and then we can start adding now, if you're not in the sun as much like you were in the summer, we can start adding lighteners and more aggressive um, products and treatments as we get closer to the holidays. And then as you get closer, then there's other things that we want to do, right. like fillers or, or Botox to prep, mm -hmm. to prep to make us even look 
you know, more youthful and, and um, young. I like that. Now, before we wrap, what else do you want people to know, and when should they see a dermatologist? Um, usually, I recommend that patients come and see the dermatologist once a year. And um, if you if you have a history of melanoma in the family, especially um, on the maternal side, uh, definitely it, uh, it doesn't matter how old you are at, at an early age mm -hmm. in your uh, elementary school years. If if there's a mole on a baby, it should be evaluated Checked. and followed. And um, and patients who have had a lot of sun exposures, fishermen, tennis players. These patients should be at least checked maybe twice a year, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, depending on what we find, if something is mm -hmm. uh, grave or dangerous, then they would have to be seen a little bit more sooner. Okay, I'm going to put you to the test. You have 30 seconds to let us know how do we prepare for the holidays. Um, drink lots of water and come and see <laughs> us. Oh, you did that really quickly. And sunblock. Oh, wait, doesn't oh, matter. Sunblock, yes, sunblock for sure. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Longwell. It's nice so to see great you. to have you on the show. And we had so much to talk about, and I hope you enjoyed that. And that does it for us here on this hour of the Health Channel on South Florida PBS. And thank you for watching today with us. Remember to visit our website, allhealthtv.com, and submit questions for our experts and to watch videos from previous episodes. You can also follow us on All Health TV and use the hashtag AllHealthTV. I'm Kathy Buccio. I'll see you next time.